Like, what do I do now? Because clearly it's something that you're identifying. So I always like to say, let's get practical here, right? So for our listeners, you know, they want to know how can they identify drought stress early, right? And avoid that long-term damage, right? That you're talking about. So for those listening, drought stress isn't just about droopy leaves, right? That's what I think it is like, oh, the leaf is droopy or it looks like it's dying. So it must need water. There are some invisible effects, right? I know you'll talk about it, visible effects that affect drought and property owners just miss it. And so it could be within the soil. It could be in the root system. You probably know this better than me. That's the, the basis of what I know about it. So what are some early visual symptoms of drought stress that a property owner should watch out for when they're going outside and looking at their property and their trees? I think the cool thing about having properties and overseeing their evolution is the weather is typically semi-consistent, right? And understanding weather patterns and when it begins to become hot and when rain becomes less or rain becomes more prevalent, soil probes are an amazing opportunity for you to poke around your site and see how much moisture is in your soil. And I do believe that most people have a signature plant in their landscape that is kind of like the telltale of watering, right? They have this one pot that has some species of, uh, you know, little bush or plant that starts weeping and that's kind of what tells them things are, uh, it's really hot outside or whatever it is. But if you're paying attention to the weather, it's either on the client end to understand where they live and how it's like, or on the service provider end to be able to kind of forecast and show what what are trends that are coming and how it is that you can be supportive.